What's going on everybody? In this video, we're gonna be talking about L'Hopital's Rule. Now, L'Hopital's Rule is gonna be that final piece of the puzzle that's really gonna allow us to start sketching curves. What L'Hopital's Rule is gonna allow us to do is evaluate some weirder limits, right? Some limits that we weren't able to evaluate before without the use of a calculator or a computer, stuff like that. So what we can do with L'Hopital's Rule, since we can evaluate all these new limits, is we can find the horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, slant asymptotes of much grosser functions. Okay, and you're going to see that. But first we need to figure out what L'Hopital's Rule actually is, and so I think it's best we get into this video. So, for L'Hopital's Rule for this video, I have the timestamps on the left, and as far as what we'll be going over, the first thing I wanna talk about is the different indeterminate forms. Right, we'll talk about infinity over infinity, zero over zero. We'll do a brief review of the limits we've you know, already been talking about, been doing, the strategies that we've been using to evaluate them, right? And then we'll move on to L'Hopital's rule, okay? We'll talk a little bit about what that rule is, how it can help us, all that. And we'll do some practice with it, okay? We'll do a couple examples there quick, and then we'll move on to some harder problems for L'Hopital's rule. We'll start off with that latter half of the video on a common mistake that I see a lot of people make, I've made before, and uh, so I, I wanna definitely touch on that, and then we'll get into those harder problems, right? We'll get into indeterminate products, indeterminate differences, indeterminate powers, and basically the idea with these sections is that the main indeterminate forms that we want to see in order to use L'Hopital's rule is gonna be zero over zero and infinity over infinity. Right? But sometimes we get other indeterminate products. We get things like, infinity times zero. We'll get things like infinity minus infinity, and we'll get things like one to the infinity, which is actually in a determinate form. We'll talk about that at the end of this video. But we'll learn how to actually turn those three forms into a zero over zero or infinity over infinity case, one which we can use L'Hopital's rule on. So that's all coming in this video. And as always, I have the full PDFs, both unfinished and finished notes in the description down below. Now, before we get into this video, I do quickly want to mention my full Calculus One course, which I'm going to have linked in the description down below. In this course, I have plenty more practice problems to really get you feeling confident with each topic. I also have video explanations for every single practice problem in the course, so don't worry, you won't be left in the dust on anything. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out the link in the description down below. Now let's get into this video. So we're gonna start off here talking about indeterminate forms, right? And we've talked about limits before. This isn't the first time we've dealt with limits. Now with limits, those indeterminate forms, the ones that we had to struggle with and do different things, manipulate all that stuff, were the forms where we got zero over zero or infinity over infinity, right? And previously, in previous videos, we've handled these types of, of forms in three different ways. There's been three main things we've done to these limits. The first thing is we've factored them, right? And so if you see something like x squared minus one over x minus one, right? This is the limit as x approaches one. So you can see that we get a zero over zero case here if you just plug in one for x. And so what you can do here, you can factor this using difference of perfect squares into x minus one, x plus one, and you'll see the x minus ones cancel. And so you're left with just x plus one. So that gets rid of the zero over zero case, right? It gets rid of the indeterminate form into something that you can actually determine. So the next thing that we talked about was simplifying. And that's not always just with fractions. There's other cases where we could just simplify too. But with this case, we have X approaching three. So if you put a three on the top and bottom there for X, you'd get a zero over zero case, right? And so, what did we do? Well, we would find common denominators, move the x minus three up to the numerator, uh, and we would just do a little magic there, and uh, you know, do do some simplifying, canceling out. Right? We'd see the x minus three would cancel with some stuff in the top here, and that would be all all fine and dandy. Okay, but that would give us something that we could actually determine. Right? It wouldn't be a zero over zero or infinity over infinity. The last method that we talked about was rationalizing. Right? And rationalizing was when we had a, a radical up here. And for instance, here we have another zero over zero case, right? Plug in zero for X and you'd see what I mean. And for this, you know, we really can't manipulate this around at all because of this radical, right? And so that radical is trapping this X squared plus nine here. And I was like, well, what, why, you know, let's try to get that X squared plus nine out of the radical. 
And so what we can do is multiply by the conjugate of this guy on top and bottom, right? We would just flip the sign here to, to a plus. And that would get rid of the radical for us. And it would free up the x squared plus nine on the inside, right? And so then we would again get out of that zero over zero or infinity over infinity case. But there's a problem with all this, right? This, these are only three cases, which you can probably imagine will not apply to absolutely every limit that can get thrown at you. For instance, what about the limit as x approaches infinity of a natural log of x over x minus one? How could you do any of these methods, right? And so, because you know you have that natural log there, we haven't really dealt with that before. And so for evaluating limits like these, we're gonna need the help of L'Hopital's rule, okay? Now what L'Hopital's rule says is that if we have a zero over zero or infinity over infinity case, what we can do is we can take this guy, we'll, we'll divide it up, we'll say that the numerator is f of x, we'll say that the, de the denominator is g of x, right? So natural log of x would be f of x, x minus one would be g of x. And what this limit is equal to is actually the derivative of the top separately, right? Not, not saying the derivative of this entire thing. It's just the derivative of this piece right here. And you put that over the derivative of the bottom piece. So you take those derivatives separately. Again, this is not quotient rule. Okay, so that is what L'Hopital's rule says. And so let's actually go and we'll do that limit right now. So we see here, again, that if you, if you plug in infinity on top and bottom, okay, you're gonna get a infinity over infinity case. Okay, because natural log of infinity is going to be infinity, and then put an infinity in the x on the denominator, you'll get an infinity. So this qualifies or, as something that we can use L'Hopital's rule on. So what I like to do is, is write a L apostrophe H to note that we're doing L'Hopital's rule and then we just go ahead and it's the same limit, nothing changes about this, but we're gonna take a derivative on the top, right, of the natural log of x, that's one over x, and we take a derivative of the bottom piece. That's x. That's uh, the derivative of x minus one, which is just one, okay? And then, I mean, this is the same thing as saying the limit as x approaches infinity of a one over x, right? This over one doesn't really matter. And we know that as x approaches infinity, that denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger. This is going to be zero. So that's all L'Hopital's rule really is. Now we'll do a much harder example uh, in, in the next problem, but that's really what this is, right? We're taking a derivative on the top, right? We took a derivative of natural log of x and got one over x. We took a derivative of x minus one and got one. And this limit is actually equal to this limit. That's what L'Hopital's rule says. So moving on to this next problem here. Now, what you're gonna see here is, is a couple things, okay? I gotta get my hair out of my face. <laughs> um, so with this problem, there, you're gonna see that we can actually have to use L'Hopital's rule more than once. We're actually gonna have to use it I think three times here. And that's, it's not very often that you have to use it three times, it's usually like twice, but that's going to, to happen, right? And and so you're usually either gonna have to use it once or twice. So we'll see that here, we'll also have to use some limit laws, but really it's the same idea. Take a derivative of the top, take a derivative of the bottom. That's your new limit. So first off, you always should check if this is actually a indeterminate form or not. Okay, and that's what gonna be the common mistake in the next section that we're, we'll talk about. Plug in zero for x here, everywhere, and you'd get a zero minus zero over zero cubed, which is a zero over zero case. So this does qualify as something that we can use L'Hopital's rule on. And so we take our derivative. First off, the derivative of the numerator is gonna be secant squared of x, that's the derivative of tangent, minus the derivative of x, which is one. And we put that over the derivative of the denominator, which is gonna be three x squared. Okay? And now let's try plugging in zero. Well, first off you get this secant squared of zero. I know, I know it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's annoying to have to deal with secants and stuff, but think about this is the same thing as secant squared of zero squared. 
And that's the same thing as saying one over cosine of zero squared. And well, cosine of zero is just one, right? So we know this guy is one, right? It's one over one all squared, that's still one. So this is a one minus one in the numerator. And in the denominator here, we have a three times zero squared, which is zero. So we get a zero over zero case, and that qualifies again as something we're gonna have to use L'Hopital's rule on, okay? So we'll do that here. This limit is going to be, a, or this, this derivative is gonna be a little bit tricky, so try to stay with me here, okay? This right here is chain rule, okay? We have a, a something that's not an x being squared. So what we do, we take a derivative of this guy as if it was power rule. And so what you should probably view this guy as is a secant of x squared. And then it becomes a lot more clear how you actually take this derivative, right? You put the two out in front, you put the one in the power, all that. So we'll get a two times secant of x, okay? Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside, the derivative of secant is secant of x times tangent of x. Okay, so this part was power rule, this part's the chain rule. Okay, that's the, that's the real part of the chain rule, right? And then we have the derivative of the denominator. The denominator, when you just use power rule, that's gonna be six x. Okay, and so rewriting this limit into something that's a little bit nicer, but not by much, we're gonna get two secant squared of x times tangent of x over six x. And you could probably notice the problem here and that is that tangent of zero is zero, and we still have an x in the denominator, so we'll get zero here as well. So, yet again, we get a zero over zero case. I I rarely ever, I think this is the only example I've really ever seen where you have to use L'Hopital's rule three times, but that's why I wanted to do it, okay? Because this is really as bad as it's going to get when you're initially given a zero over zero form, okay? But again, I mean, it's just, it's just taking derivatives on top and bottom and then, well, plugging in your, your zero, right? And seeing what you get. If you get another zero over zero case, you use L'Hopital's rule again, okay? Now we can use L'Hopital's rule one more time here and that's gonna give us our answer, but it's gonna be really gross to try to take this entire derivative, right? It's gonna be really messy. And so what we can do is we can just divide up this limit right? What I would do is I would do this as the limit of, and actually you can simplify this a little bit to make this a three in the, in the denominator. I would do secant squared of x over three times the limit as x approaches, infin uh, x approaches zero of tangent of x over x. That way, right here, you have that zero over zero piece. And here you have, well, we know that if you plug in a zero here for X, you get a one, right? We discussed that up here. So this guy right here is actually a one third. And then we can use a L'Hopital's rule right here. And this, this is a lot nicer. And I know you might be confused here, right? How can we actually divide up this limit like this? Well, that's kind of what we do anyway, isn't it? Right, we look at, well, what happens is this, what happens to this thing as X approaches zero? Okay, cool, that's what happens. What happens to this thing as X approaches zero? Right, and you always look at these things separately anyway. So really all we're doing here is we're just grouping them now. We're saying, all right, well, let's look at this secant over here. Let's look at the tangent over here. And that's really it. But now we've simplified the derivative for ourselves. And so occasionally, it's nice to use the limit laws. You really don't need to use that very often. Cool. So we're going to take that, deriv that derivative on top and bottom. We know that the derivative of, uh, let me see if I can make this a little, look a little great, a little nicer. Cool. 
The derivative of tangent is secant squared and the derivative of x is just one. So since secant squared of x is just gonna be one as x approaches zero, this is a one third times one, which is one third. And so that is the answer to that guy. Okay, so again, this was probably one of the hardest uh, examples that you would get with, or not, not necessarily that's hard, but it, it's, it's one of the um, most annoying examples that you get. I think that's a better way to describe it, right? Because we had to use L'Hopital's rule three different times. And, you know, we did a little bit of trickery with dividing up the limits here, but, you know, that's something we, we know that we can do. We can, you know, multiply different things that are inside this limit. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it's it's just that. So moving on to a common mistake that I see people make with L'Hopital's rule, right? This is this is huge. A lot of people do this, um, and I've done this before quite a few times, and it's it's been so annoying uh, when I was in my calc classes. So you always, and this is why I've said this, even in the beginning of this problem, we made sure that we had a zero over zero case. You need to always make sure. People don't make sure. I didn't make sure. And so plug in pi here. And I know it's from the negative side. I'll talk about that in a second. It doesn't really change anything, but um, plug in pi here. See what you get. You get sine of pi over one minus cosine of pi. Right? And you might be like, okay, well, yeah, cosine of pi, right? That's, that makes sense how this would be zero, right? Sine of pi, we know that's zero. But the problem is you might have just missed it. Cosine of pi is negative one. So this is a one minus minus one, right? And so this guy is actually zero. It's zero over two, right? Which is zero. And that's the actual answer. It, it's that quick because sometimes you can just plug in something like that and it'll work and you won't get a zero over zero case. But people will try to force that in their head and they'll try to be like, oh, well, yeah, you know, cosine of pi, of course, it's gonna be one and then it's all gonna cancel out all nice and we're gonna have to use L'Hopital's rule. But no, like seriously, sometimes this happens. Sometimes they'll give you that and you won't have to use L'Hopital's rule and people will anyway and then they'll get it wrong, right? Because you can't apply L'Hopital's rule to something that wasn't a zero over zero or wasn't a infinity over infinity to begin with. Right, that was the whole point of the rule. We talked about that. So the only other thing I want to talk about with this section is that sometimes you get like a one-sided limit, right? From the negative side or from the positive side. Let me just review quick what that even means. So for instance, if we have the graph of y equals one over x. Okay, think about this graph right here. This graph, if you, this is a terrible looking graph, but still, if you are approaching zero from the negative side of one over X, right? That means you are getting closer and closer to X equals zero along this curve, which means you'd have to be traveling in this way, right? And you're getting closer and closer to X equals zero, but from the left side, that's much different. And this is gonna give you negative infinity. It's much different than if you were traveling from the right hand side. Okay, if you were traveling from the right hand side, you're going up to infinity, right? Your Y is becoming infinity. And so that is very uh, valuable, but how does that change the limits here when we work with them? Well, for any of these L'Hopital's rule examples, the only time that the, the one-sided limit would come into play is after we've already done the uh, L'Hopital's rule stuff, right? And then maybe you have a limit at the end, like one over X or whatever, that you'd have to actually use that one-sided limit with, right? That seems like the the main amount of, of the cases you'd have to deal with is, or the, the majority of the amount of cases you'd have to deal with is you'd have to just look at the one-sided limit at the very end of the problem. Okay, but that's really all. You don't really have to do it much, if at all, when uh, doing any of these new limits. Okay. So that is a brief review of one-sided limits. Now let's get into some of these other forms that we need to convert into zero over zero or infinity over infinity forms, right? Which is the only time we can use L'Hopital's rule. So if we end up with something like zero times infinity, which we also can't determine like 
that's why we say indeterminate, right? What we'll have to do is, like in this case, right, we get a, uh, a zero times, um, or yeah, we get a zero times natural log of, of zero goes to negative infinity, right? And so what we'll have to do here is convert this guy somehow and make it a zero over zero or infinity over infinity, okay? Now you might be like, okay, why does natural log of zero go to negative infinity? Uh, if you, This is a graph that you should be somewhat familiar with, right? Um, you know that the natural log of one is zero and the natural log of any fraction that's smaller than one is gonna be negative, right? And so uh, that's the graph of natural log of X. It's something you should know. It's gonna go down to negative infinity. So you have this indeterminate product and what you can do to get rid of it and make it an indeterminate form is you can just make it a complex fraction. Instead of having uh, x times natural log of x, you could flip this in the opposite way and make this one over x, right? Like, and I say in the opposite way, what I was, what I was meaning when I was saying that is I was picturing in my head, uh, one over two over three over four, right? How do you divide these two fractions? Well, you flip this guy up to the, to the numerator, right? And you, you quite literally, you bring it up to the numerator and you flip it. Okay, and when you do that, you would end up, if you do that to this guy, you would end up with the x natural log of x, right? And so I'm doing that same process, but in reverse. I'm bringing this x down to the denominator and I'm flipping it. Instead of an x over one, it's now a one over x and it's in the denominator, okay? That's all I'm picturing. So sometimes I, I say things, um, that are that are makes perfect sense in my head, but I realize I'm making an underlying assumption that I should probably talk about, right? <laughs> so, uh, anywho, what can we do with this guy? Well, we know that if this denominator goes to zero, right, this entire fraction in the bottom is going to get bigger, bigger, and bigger, and so this guy goes to infinity, okay, and. Of course, right, zero from the positive side, we know that one over X, something we just talked about, is gonna go to infinity. Now, natural log of X, that's gonna go to negative infinity, but still it's an infinity over infinity case, okay? And so, right there, that's something we can use L'Hopital's rule on. So, if we do that, we get the limit as X approaches zero from the positive side, and real quick here, uh, notice that we have to have a positive side here because there's nothing on the left-hand side. So you can't talk about a two-sided limit because there is no other side. But anyways, let's do L'Hopital's rule here. The derivative of natural log of X is one over X. The derivative of one over X, that's something that I've always been saying to you guys to memorize, that's negative one over X squared. Okay. Now, uh, just looking at, at what each of these guys are, right? You would get another infinity over infinity case, wouldn't you? And it seems like that would still continue because all these X's would stay in the denominators. But notice that you can do a little bit of simplifying here, okay? You can bring this X squared up to the numerator and now you're gonna get some cancellations. This guy is the same thing as the limit as X approaches zero from the positive side of negative X squared over X, right? Bring that up to the numerator, flip it, you're gonna get the x squared up here and the negative. And that is the same thing as saying the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of negative x, right? Because you get the square cancels off with the x here. And so we're approaching zero, that makes this zero. Okay, awesome. And so that right there is indeterminate products in a nutshell. Now let's move on to indeterminate differences, right? And so I was saying here, right, just as you can get those indeterminate products, right, the zero times infinity, you're also gonna be able to get indeterminate differences where you have something like an infinity minus infinity. And we're gonna handle those types of cases in the exact same way. We're going to convert them into something that's a zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Right in here, it's it's mostly finding common denominators. Usually, like you'll you'll get something like that. There's other cases as well, but uh, that's 
uh, a very common case that you'd see. So that's exactly what we'll do here. We'll take this limit and we'll just find common denominators to try to convert this thing. We'll have to multiply the, just writing this guy out here. We'll have to multiply the left piece by x minus one over x minus one and multiply the right piece by natural log of x over natural log of x. And now what we have is the limit as x approaches one from the positive side of a x minus one minus, right? That's, that's where this is coming from. And we're gonna have minus a natural log of x And that's all gonna be over the same denominator. That same denominator is gonna be x minus one times natural log of x. And I might've went a little uh, one step too fast for you guys if you want to multiply this out first, right? You can do that. The only reason why I didn't is because we're multiplying by one here. And so you kind of already know what's gonna be in the numerator here. And we know the denominators are the same. That's the whole point in finding common denominators. So that's why I felt it was okay to skip. But anyways, what do we have now? Do we have a zero over zero case or infinity over infinity? We'll plug in one and you'd get a one minus one minus natural log of one over a one minus one times zero. And right, natural log of one is, is zero. So we get a zero over zero case. This is something we can use L'Hopital's rule on. Cool. And so now take that limit and take a derivative on the top and the bottom separately. So taking a derivative on the top, that's gonna to give us a one minus, this goes away, and you get the derivative of natural log of x is a one over x. Then take a derivative of the denominator. This is gonna be a little bit of product rule, right? We're gonna have the derivative of the first piece, which is just one, times the second piece, that's natural log of x. Okay plus the derivative of the second, which is one over x, times the first piece. So that's x minus one. You could, you could also do one over x times x minus one, but I'm gonna write this as x minus one over x. Right, so I'll already multiply that one over x onto the x minus one. Okay, if that's a little confusing, just do that product rule out and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so before we, I mean, we can look at already if this is a, a, uh, a zero over zero case, we can plug in one, we get a one minus uh, one over zero plus plug in a, a one here and a one here and you'll get zero, right? Cause you get a one minus one. So this is zero over zero again, looks like we're gonna have to use a little bit Tal's rule. But before we do that, this is not going to be something that we want to take a derivative of using quotient rule and all that stuff. It'll be just annoying. So what we can do is we can simplify this a little bit, right? We can write this as the limit as X approaches one from the positive side of one minus one over X over the natural log of X. Plus we split up this fraction and do X over X. That's one minus one over X. And now look at that. That's a lot nicer. And there's no quotient rule or anything like that. Right? That's what you can do when you only have, um, when you have multiple terms in the numerator, you can split that up and make sure that all of them have the same denominator, right? Uh, they do here, they have the same denominator, except that, well, we know that X over X is one. So we already simplified that. All right, cool, let's use L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of the top here is gonna be, well, derivative of this is zero. Derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. There's already a negative out here, so that's gonna be positive. Right, and you see why I tell you to memorize that one over x derivative. It comes up so much. And then we have a natural log of x, so that's one over x, and then we have another one over x squared. This goes away, and yeah. At this point, let's see if we, uh, we have an answer here. Plug in that one. You're gonna get one over one plus one. That's one half, looking good, looking good. And that's our answer. 
right? Is this the color we were on? Yeah, we, it is. Same color, right? Yeah. I want to make sure it's the right shade of blue. <laughs> I can't be um, messing with my colors here. So, yeah, there's another case where you have to just do L'Hopital's rule twice, but here again, all we did to convert this guy into a zero over zero or infinity over infinity case was we just found common denominators, okay? Last section, indeterminate powers. Now, there's three main, I wanna spend a little more time on this section because it, it can be a little weird. Um, definitely the weirdest of the, the, the different indeterminate forms. And so we can get three main cases here for indeterminate powers, right? There's three main things that you'll see. First is zero over zero. That is an indeterminate form. You have infinity to the zero and you also have one to the infinity. And I will tell you guys, I argued with my Calc 2 teacher for, in my whole class, we just berated him for a solid, I believe it was like 15 minutes. And we were like, how could one to the infinity be an indeterminate form? It's one times one times one on to you know to infinity right so that's still one it doesn't make any sense for it to be anything different but we're not talking about actually one here right that's the thing that i was missing is that it's not one being multiplied an infinite number of times it's something that's really really close to one okay and so you wouldn't expect that something really really close to one when you multiply it out an infinite number of times would still be one because it's not even one to begin with, right? It's, it's something really close to it. And if you actually look at the, uh, the continuous, um, if you look at the limits that we used for uh, finding the um, continuous compounding interest, right? Um, continuously compounding interest, that's what I meant to say. That was actually a one over infinity case, right? And that's, I just gave you that. I said it was E, right? And so we got one to the infinity was E. It's really weird, right? And so that's the thing that you have to really worry about with with um, these limits, is that it's not actually one to the infinity. We're using limits, right? So it's something that is approaching one and something that is approaching infinity. So I did want to mention that because that is something I struggle with a lot. And that was in Calc 2. This is not even, uh, I mean, we're, we're talking about Calc 1 stuff right now. So, yeah. And again, if you, if you want to check that out, right? Why one to the infinity, an example of where it is a uh, indeterminate form, you can check out the exponential growth and decay video. So again, still same thing. We're trying to get into zero over zero or infinity over infinity form. And now what do we do with this thing? Well, what we're going to always pretty much always use is natural logs. Okay. Now, when we evaluate this limit, we get it equal to a single number right? It's equal to something like one half or one fourth or whatever, right? And so let's just call that number that this limit is equal to the number that we're trying to find. We'll call that Y. Okay. And this is going to allow us to do some operations like using natural logs. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll take a natural log on both sides and that's going to allow us to get that cotangent out of there, out of the exponent, right? Now we can move the natural log inside of the limit, right? It really doesn't matter. And uh, you can review limit laws if you're wondering a little more about that, but just, I would accept it for now. Natural log of Y is the limit as X approaches zero from the positive side of the natural log of one plus sine of four X raised to the cotangent of X power. Okay. We know that the natural log means that we can move this power out front and multiply it. So this is a natural log of Y equaling the limit as X approaches zero from the positive side of cotangent of X times the natural log of one plus sine of four X. Now let's look at this thing as x approaches zero. As, I mean, cotangent of x, we can think of that as one over tangent, right? And one over tangent, make that go to zero, you're gonna get one over zero, right? This thing gets closer and closer to zero, and so this thing goes to infinity, okay? So you get an infinity here, and then you have natural log of, well, you have a sine of four times zero is gonna be zero, this is added to one, 
So you get a natural log of, on the inside here is one, okay? And so you get a zero out of this entire thing. And so this is infinity times zero, that's a indeterminate product, right? And so this indeterminate power, right? This guy has now turned into the indeterminate product from this section. So what we need to do, and actually it's pretty quick to get rid of this one, we'll just make the cotangent a tangent, right? We'll make that a tangent. And what that allows us to do is get a zero over zero case. So get a natural log of one plus sine of four X over tangent and you can verify that we now have a zero over zero case. We can use L'Hopital's rule on it. So using L'Hopital's rule, we're gonna get that natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches zero of, this derivative is gonna be a little annoying, but it's you know not the end of the world. We're gonna get a one over the thing that's in the natural log, right? Picture it as being x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. The inside was the one plus sine of four x. That derivative is gonna be a little more chain rule, right? Because we only we also have a four x on the inside of the sine. So we're gonna get a cosine of four x as the first derivative there, right? Of the, of the sine part. And then we have to take a derivative of the four x, which is four. Okay, and that's all gonna be over a, a derivative of uh, tangent of x, which is secant squared of x. Now we've already talked about the derivative of secant squared of x, or the, the limit of secant squared of x as x approaches zero, it's one. And so we know that the natural log of y is gonna equal something over one. But plug in zero to this guy, and you'd get, well, you have a cosine of, this will be zero, so that's one, so you get a four in the numerator. In the denominator, we already talked about this. This guy is going to be uh, one because sine of four times zero is zero. So you get a four over one in the numerator. So natural log of y is equal to four. And if you exponentiate both sides, right? You, you make both of these guys powers of e, you'll get rid of the natural log. This will be y, right? That's how you get rid of the natural log. And so you get that y is e to the four. And that's the answer. Okay, remember, y was what we said was gonna be the output of this limit, right? It was gonna be our answer. Okay, we were just kind of setting up an equation because in setting up an equation, we can start introducing different operations like natural log. We could take a natural log of both sides. And so that was why we introduced the y in the first place. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you feel a lot better with L'Hopital's rule now and you understand all the different cases and all that. If you're interested in doing plenty more practice problems that you and I can go through together, check out the link in the description down below for my full Calc 1 course. But uh, yeah, guys, that's going to do it for me. I'll see you soon.